So I want to share a quick story about Milton Erickson that I think uh, points to something really fundamental about Erickson and about his capacity to assist people in making changes. That most of the books on Erickson, most of the analyses of Erickson totally overlook. They totally overlook. So the story actually begins with a guy called Herbert Spiegel, who was an another hypnotist, a contemporary of Erickson, and was somebody who Erickson was on uh, friendly terms with and could correspond with. Now Spiegel, so the story goes, had a smoking cessation client that he worked with across a number of sessions and utterly failed to make any discernible difference with. And he'd, you know, he was a highly skilled practitioner and came at this from a number of different angles, and uh, but yet still managed to make no difference whatsoever, it would seem, with this client. Now, it just so happened that this client had a business trip scheduled to Phoenix, Arizona, which is where Erickson was living and practicing at the time. So Spiegel thought, well, why don't I get in touch with Erickson and see if he can do something with this client, see if he can perhaps help this client where I have failed to do so. Um, because, of course, Erickson had a, a reputation and everything. So Spiegel was curious, and he got in touch with with Erickson. Erickson agreed he would see the client. So how the story unfolds is that the client went to see Erickson once and once only and that was it. Stop smoking right then and there and uh, continued to stop smoking for, uh, to remain stopped so far as I know indefinitely. I, I don't know the details of this client following up. But Spiegel was utterly fascinated by this. You know, what did Ericsson do? Understandably, you know, what did Ericsson do? So Spiegel probably knew better than to ask Ericsson. I mean, you know, you, you don't need to know too much about Ericsson to know that the guy very rarely gave a straight answer on anything. So Spiegel decided he would ask the client instead. And the client said something along the lines of, I don't know, I just sat there with this guy and it was clear that he had all sorts of issues and, and problems of his own. It was clear that he was in a lot of pain. Erickson had post-polio syndrome. And yet in that moment, in that moment, I could tell that all he cared about was me, me getting the result that I wanted to get. That was all he cared about. I don't know. I just couldn't carry on smoking after that. Now the interesting thing about that is of course Spiegel wanted to know what Erickson did, but the guy couldn't give a description of what Erickson did. He can only give a description of the impact that Erickson had. And then of course he's going to give his rationalizations about what that was about, his story about what that was about, and, and at best that's going to point in a direction, it's not going to really tell us. But I think the real key there is the difference wasn't what Erickson did. The difference was the impact that he had. And there's clues in what the client says that point in a particular direction towards Erickson's beingness. Erickson's beingness. How he was being with the client, not what he was doing to the client, not what even he was doing for the client in terms of process, in terms of anything like that, how he was being with. Now, here we are, I think it's about 36 years after Erickson's passing, and there are a whole load of books out there analyzing the techniques of Milton Erickson in various ways. And there are many very good books, and there's a lot of value in those books, and there's a lot of value in looking for techniques, looking at techniques much to be learned. But to me, the real essence of Ericsson, I suspect and suspect strongly, I never met Ericsson, goes way beyond that. My favorite book on Ericsson is the book, An American Healer. And it isn't because um, it details Ericsson's techniques or anything like that. It is a bunch of individual testimony from people who knew Ericsson people who met Ericsson, people who were impacted by Ericsson. And this is the thing, they're all talking about their 
their experience of Ericsson and what Ericsson meant to them as a human being. And it's a fascinating thing to read. And if you take the title of the book, An American Healer, this is a theme that runs through the book. There was something about Ericsson. People who were exposed to Ericsson found it a very enriching thing, found it a very healing thing, a very transformative thing to be with Ericsson, to spend time in Ericsson's company. Now, I have a particular fascination with this because there are things that are said about Ericsson which are also said uh, about Sidney Banks, the founder of the Three Principles. Many similar things get said. And my suspicion is that Sidney Banks also had this way of being with people that was palpable to people and was inherently, you could call it healing, I prefer the term nourishing to people. Would have people just relax, relax out of their caught up, knotted up thinking and relax into more of the totality of who they are, relax more into their ground of being. And, um, and I've met people like this myself. Uh, one example that, I'm, that I often bring up is a guy called Steve Hardison. Steve Hardison is the coach of my old mentor, Steve Chandler. And when I met Steve Hardison, I, it was quite a thing because he was speaking. And, and when I was analyzing his words and what he was saying, he wasn't really saying much that had any real content to it. He wasn't, he, he wasn't even speaking very elegantly. Funnily enough, but there was something about his beingness. The guy was so open, so unguarded, so, so, so present. There was just a, t a total openness, a total unguardedness. It's the only way I can describe the impact his presence had on me. The impact his presence had on me. I actually left that meeting and, and I went home to, um, to my wife and my family. And later on in the evening, for some reason, um, I don't know what triggered it off, I cried. I felt so overwhelmed with emotion that I cried. And my wife said, well, what, what, what's, what's the matter? She was obviously confused because I'm not a guy that cries much, you can probably tell. I'm not like a touchy-feely kind of guy as by, by nature. But I did, I, I cried. And I said to her, and I didn't know these words were gonna come out because these weren't thoughts I've been thinking. I said, I'm sick of cynicism. I'm sick of cynicism, I'm sick of cynicism in me. I'm sick of it in you. I'm sick of it in the world. I'm sick of cynicism. And I don't know where that bubbled up from, uh, but I can tell you, it was a, there was a pretty big shift afterwards in terms of my own beingness. Um, and, and that really led to a fascination with this kind of thing. I just say, in addition to this, I spent some time with Stephen Gilligan, trained with Stephen Gilligan. And Stephen Gilligan's a guy who really gets this. He's a guy that spent a lot of time with Ericsson and he really gets this. And he talks about it in terms of limbic resonance. How you are being with somebody is hugely impactful. Not what you are doing, what you are saying, any of that stuff. That stuff can be cool too, but how you are being. This is absolutely huge. So this is something that I've, you know, got more and more into across time. It has huge utility to put it in a cold frame in terms of the efficacy of your work. If you work as a professional, as a consultant, as a coach, as a hypnotist, as a hypnotherapist, whatever. But it also has huge impact in terms of your life. If you take that book, An American Healer, that's not all the testimony from his clients. Some of the people in there were clients. It's people who knew him, it's family members, it's friends, it's people who are even just um, casual encounters, you know? But he had an impact on those people. They felt things shift for them as a result of being with him. So this is a hugely fascinating area for me. And to me, that beingness, I've talked about it elsewhere as groundedness. This is the key. This is the thing that's gonna take you to the next level in terms of your work with clients, is developing groundedness, a more expansive groundedness. You know, uh, that's, that's what's gonna start giving you what you might term transformative presence. So this is a wonderful thing. Um, 
and uh, that's that's what we're covering in the material about going beyond attachment and beyond the subtle fears this is a developmental program for you uh, if you're interested in partaking in this i would love to have you on board you'll find the details around here somewhere um, if, if you're not if the program's not for you if you think well you know that's it's all about out there and everything like that um, still hang on with these videos stay on with the videos that i'm making around this please do remain engaged because um i would love for you to open up to the possibility of this as part of your pathway going forward you know not not because you're going to end up on this program or not that's aside from it it's about you being you at your best being the very best hypnotist you can be being the very best hypnotherapist you can be being the very best coach that you can be please open to this start to become aware of this if it seems a bit flaky and a bit out there to you right now maybe it won't in the future i know if i went back five years ten years and was delivering this message to me back then i had been like yeah yeah that's all cool but you know what's the next technique give me a technique give me a technique um you know so just open up to this because at some point it's going to become relevant to you if you really really want to become the very best that you can be at what you do this is going to become relevant to you at some point okay so if you have any questions around anything that's come up in this video please do make use of the comment section to ask those questions if you like this video please like it please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and please do share this with any friends that you feel might benefit from this information